Hello, welcome to the next episode in the Mono Game tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering audio. Now, audio is almost as broad of a topic as graphics, and so we're just going to be covering the two main types of audio that you'll use in your Mono Game application, which are songs and sound effects. Songs are typically longer form audio that um, are more prominent in your game, and then sound effects are things like jumping or shooting, like very short, quick things you just play, you know, on a whim. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get them working. First thing we have to do is load them inside of our content pipeline in the MGCB editor. So go ahead and open that up, add a new folder, and I'm gonna call mine audio. Okay, now we have to add some items. I have two items here, so I'm gonna add my existing items. I'm gonna add these two items here, throw those in there, go ahead and give it a build. And there we go, we now have it all built. Mine says skipped because I, I loaded this in off camera. Sorry about that. Okay. Now we are done. That's pretty much how we load it into the pipeline. Next thing we have to do is um, actually use it in our game. So in order to use songs, we have to actually um, include something else from the Microsoft XNA framework, which is the using Microsoft.xna.framework.media. And this gives us access to the media player, which just plays our media. Um, so now let's go ahead and load in a song. So it's really nice, reads just like English. If you want to make a, you want to have a song in your game, create a song object here, declare one as a member variable. And then in the load content, we are going to be loading content. So I'm just going to say song equals content dot load a song. And this will just be the uh, file path and name of your song. So audio slash, and then it's going to be for me, it's a retro song dot mp3, but of course we ignore the file extension at the end. Cool, so now let's go ahead and play it. Now the way we play this is we don't just do like song dot play, although that would be pretty kind of, that would be pretty cool. Um, it's more efficient to have a media player here. So we're going to use our media player. It's giving us some issues here. And then we'll just do play. And then you see that in the argument list, it takes in a song. So just throw in a song there. Bam, let's see if our music plays. Um, now let's go ahead and control it. Let's see what we can do with that. Because maybe we don't want it to just play right away. Maybe we want to choose when it plays. So uh, why don't we do that? Let's actually have it so that when we press a key, it starts playing. Now the problem is that monogame keyboard inputs are held. They only care about if they're being held during that frame. They don't care if that's the first frame or not. We care if this was the first frame that the person pressed this key. So we have to implement our own like is key press system. And I've been doing this like kind of, uh, you know, like weirdly in these in these episodes. So I thought I'd give you like an actual solid way of how you're usually going to do it in a game. Um, so the way you do it, the easiest way, in my opinion, is just to store the previous keyboard state. So we'll just like create a keyboard state object here. Um, and I'm just going to call this our previous um, keyboard state. So there we go. Um, and now what we'll do is we'll just go into our update here and we now have to just basically grab our current state. So keyboard state, um, current keyboard state equals keyboard.getState, .get state. Now what we do is we basically just check for input from this. So now what we'll just say is we'll say if current state, keyboard state dot is key down. And now for playing a song, I think I want to do space, so keys dot space. And then it to check if, if this is the first frame, we have to say and um, not previous keyboard state dot is key down. And then keys dot space. This is essentially just saying, if it was press this current frame, do this thing, cool. So now what we'll do is I'll just say media player dot play and I want to play our song cool and now what we'll do is we'll just say our previous keyboard state is equal to our current keyboard state uh, now we can go ahead and check if this is working so make sure that I haven't played it already go to play we hear nothing then we press space okay so now we want the basic functionality of you know how we're gonna use our song so we're gonna pause it we're gonna stop it, we're gonna unpause it, so that sort of stuff. So it's really, really simple. Just like copy this code and throw a couple down here. So I'm gonna make um, a pause and an unpause here. Um, so that should be fine. 
let's go ahead and do this. If we have a, if we press the P key and then the R key for resume. So if we press the P key, we will do media player pause. Of course, we don't need to provide a song to pause here because we can only play one song at one time. Um, and the reasons are a little, you know, um, we'll talk about them in a second. Then we have resume here, same deal. We don't need to provide a song because this assumes that we already have a song playing and we can only play one at a time. Okay, so now we play it and then we pause it and then we resume it and you notice that it will hold its state. But then if we press play, it'll just restart. Same deal. And then you can get the idea. If you wanna look through all the things you can do here, we can do media player dot and then just scroll through. Um, we have some some properties here like is muted, is repeating, is shuffled, all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, you, they're they're kind of they kind of read like English. Okay, but let's let's look at a game. So we have the music playing in the background of a game, but we also have things like you know like NPCs talking and like shooting and walking sound effects and jumping sound effects. How do we achieve this if we can only play one song at a time? Well, I kind of hinted at it in the beginning. We have sound effects. And sound effects are super, super easy. So we have sound effects here. We can just use type sound effect. I'm going to call this effect. Isn't that a, an innovative name? Uh, let's go down here and let's load it in. So effect equals content dot load angle brackets sound effect. And mine is called is in the audio folder and it's called jump SFX. Cool. Boom. How do we use this? Extremely complex. Let's go ahead and do this. Why don't we do it so that every time we press M, why not what M? Sure. We'll do every time we press M. I'm just throwing these letters out of nowhere. Then we'll play our, our sound effect. So it's really easy. The way you do it is you just, you just do effect dot play. That's it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and check it out. Um, Okay guys, so I missed something when I loaded in my sound effect. Uh, when you click on this stuff, you'll notice that there are some properties at the bottom here. Um, and it'll say the processor is the song. Uh, for our sound effects, we want to click on this processor and then change this. Um, so I'm gonna change this to sound effect. Um, and the same thing where like, if we're loading in an MP3, we want this MP3 importer, but um, if we are loading in like a wave file and this isn't wave, uh, make sure that you're selecting your wave file or whatever your appropriate file format is. Now mine just happened to be MP3, so we're good on that um, that matter. But yes, we do need to load it in as with the sound effect processor. So now we'll rebuild here, and there we go. Awesome. Now this should all work as it should have before. Okay, so we don't have anything right now, but we press M. There you go. Okay, so there are a couple things that we could do to a sound effect. It's not as crazy deep as the media player or these songs. I recommend that you look into the documentation for more um, in-depth stuff on that. But for the effects, um, if you wanna have things like looping over and stuff, um, then we're going to be doing creating sound effect instances. And so I'm going to create one up here, which is a sound effect instance. And I'm just gonna call it my effects instance. Now, why are we doing this? Well, it makes sense because we want to load in the actual audio that we have, and then if we manipulate this audio, we don't want it to actually affect the, you know, source. You know, we're not actually affecting the file, but we don't want it to affect the original audio. So, like, we want to like maybe have some sort of um, walking sound effect that sounds different when we walk in water, but then we go back on the land and we need that original sound effect again. So what we do is we'd create a separate instance of the sound effect, do some manipulations to it, whatever you want to do, and we would retain the quality of the original effect. So now how do we get an effect instance? Well, it's really easy. We just say effect instance equals effect dot create instance. There we go. Awesome stuff. Now we can just say effect instance and then just go through whatever stuff we have here. So we have like a pitch, a pan, um, these are things like, you know, you can move around where the audio is coming from. I am not honestly, honestly for you, like I'm not a huge audio person, but I can tell you that is looped. If you set it to true, it will loop it. So now if we change this to instead of effect.play, 
we will do effect instance top play we might have some issues here <laughs> let's go ahead and press this run button here and then press m i'm not pressing m right now it's just going on its own so yeah there's some pretty cool stuff that you can do with this it goes way deeper than what i've covered here but there's all there's of course a lot of stuff and honestly a lot of it you can really just look at by using an ide like visual studio or visual studio code using the dot operator and then just like looking through what you have you know to your disposal here and that's kind of how i figured out a lot of stuff with mono game anyways so um yeah that's pretty much it if you enjoyed this video found it useful thank you very much have a good day and make sure to um, also join my discord if you have any more questions and support me on patreon if you like all right see ya